What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Roby Tech, the show where we get you up to speed on everything having to do with the tech and PC world. We would say gaming, but this one, this one's special. This is a DIY for a video we did a couple weeks ago, which was about building a thousand dollar PC. Not only do we just tell you about the parts that we chose, but you know what, we're gonna build it today as well. If everything goes according to plan, by the end of this, we will actually uh, have a PC built. But before I do that, if you wanna check out the why we chose the parts, you can check out that video right here. We'll also go ahead and put a link to that in the video description below. We had a lot of comments about why we chose the parts that we did. And I wanted to spend a little time before we got into the build, I promise we'll get to the build quickly, on why I chose these particular parts. This build is the most future-proof kind of cornerstone build that you can do for $1,000. Everything that I chose here was specifically because not only would you be able to build it, but you would have a great foundation for a build that you could upgrade later. So I didn't choose like B450 for the motherboard. I chose X570 because I wanted you to be able to upgrade this very, very easily. Same thing with the graphics card, same thing with the cooler, same thing with the case. Everything was about upgradability. If you wanna check out that build and why we chose this parts, you can check out that video right here. Let's talk about the parts that we put inside of this build. At the brain, is the Ryzen 5 3600. This is an a uh, six core, 12 thread CPU and processor. The reason I chose this and the reason I chose Ryzen is because unlike anything choosing on Intel right now, Intel is a one trick pony. Ryzen's kind of king. We're gonna start simple, choose something like the 3600. This does actually have a cooler in it, uh, which is kind of cool, but we went ahead and did a different cooler. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. For the motherboard, we chose the Prime X570P. I chose specifically Asus. This is their budget board. A couple things. One, I chose X570 because it has PCIe 4. Yes, yes, I know. There isn't a real reason quite yet for PCIe Gen 4, but in the future, we already actually have PCIe Gen 4 graphics card coming out. And in two years, if you want to upgrade to one of those in a 3000, 4000 NVIDIA series, or RDNA 2.0, then you have a board that already supports it. You're not gonna basically having to replace your motherboard. Standard features, I mean, you still got um, addressable headers, you've got plenty of M.2 space. Overall, it's an aesthetically pleasing board as well, so felt like a good choice and overall quality choice for the price. For M.2, uh, this actually says 500 gig. Uh, that's because at the time of filming, uh, the one that we chose was a one terabyte. We're gonna throw one terabyte in this, but this is a 500 gig Western Digital Blue. Again, you're looking at 2400 megabits per second. There is nothing faster than M.2, and I wanted to make sure that if you're going to use this for gaming or rendering or anything else that you had the fastest I.O. speed, Western Digital is a great brand. Right now, these are going for like 99 bucks, which is why they're always selling out. So that's why I specifically chose this one. I know a lot of people are like, well, why not throw like a physical, uh, like a 7200 RPM drive? Because bang for buck and M.2s is actually really good right now. And there's just, there really isn't anything faster. For cooler, this is the Hyper 212 Black. Use the Cooler Master before. There's lots of different options. Trying to keep in that price point. If you ever wanted to quickly, let's say for instance, you had a 3600, you, you got an extra couple hundred bucks, you wanted to upgrade it to a 3700X. So I went the Hyper 212. I but really, this is such a personal choice. And so if you decided to go, go off rails, wouldn't be surprised if something like this was something you might do that with. G-Skill Rip Jaws. Uh, this is DDR4. This is a 3600 kit at uh, C16, compatible with this one. Uh, ideal for Ryzen, obviously, the faster the RAM, the better it is for the CPU. I didn't want you to have to rebuy all of your DIMMs going to 3600, specifically as we get faster kits going further and further. Again, upgradability. This is compatible with the X570, you'll actually see me. Make sure this runs when uh, we get this done and we'll we'll upgrade that in the BIOS. Another part, and this is the one that's actually probably caused the most debate, and I'll talk about this, is I did the RM750X by Corsair. A lot of people chimed in on this because they were like, why 750X? And, and let me just be super clear. Main reason being is a Corsair makes a great, great PSU. I've used a ton of Corsairs. I've yet to have one of these fail on me in the 30 or so builds that I've done in the last year and a half. The second thing is, this has two EPS connectors for CPU. If you're gonna talk about upgradability, and let's say for instance you, like, let's say you threw a B450 or a B350 motherboard in here, and you only got like a 650 watt or 500 watts power supply, which would be completely fine for this. If you decided, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and go to an X570 or an X670, or you know, heaven forbid, a Z490, um, build later on, guess what? You'd have to also replace your PSU because most of those cards require two EPS CPU connectors. So when I thought about, hey, why did I choose this specifically 750 watt? Is because when I went to a later build, if I wanted to, if you want to upgrade this, you're not going to have to replace this motherboard. And this is going to be more than powerful enough if you went in 2080 Ti, 3080 Ti, this will be perfectly fine. Finally, 
The other thing that got a ton of comments, you know, I'm just gonna throw this out of the way, put this out of the way. Another thing that got a ton of comments was the Zotac Gaming GeForce 1660. And I know a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, why a 1660? Why not a 5700 XT? Why not an RTX 2060? Well, the main thing is, is again, when you think about the principles on why I chose all the parts I did for the build, there was only so much money I had to spend on a graphics card. Because again, if I spent more on the graphics card, that may mean that I was going to a V450, which wouldn't mean you get PCIe Gen 4, or I had to choose a less powerful power supply, which meant that you'd have to upgrade it later on. So when I went with the G4 1660, again, and I was sticking to budget. Now, why I chose NVIDIA, Team Green over Team Red? Well, it's quite simply having to do is this is still the king when it comes to uh, this tier of graphics card. 5600 and 5600 XT were not outperforming it at the time that I had basically chosen this part. AMD's graphic drivers haven't been the best. There's been actually been pretty problematic. While Team Green has done a really good job of staying up to date and just doing a better job of making sure their compatibility. The other thing too is in the links in the description below, I also put some very easy upgrades, like for instance, the 2060 KO, which is a 2070 and 2080 die that actually performs on par with the 2070 Super for not much more. So if you wanted to know an easy upgrade that's there, I also went ahead and threw in 5700 XT and 5700. So there's links there for that. If you're looking for probably the first thing to upgrade, this would be the one that I'd select. But again, for the price, this is going to be a great 1080p graphics card, 1080p gaming PC, and I still stand by my decision in terms of this is the best choice for that. So boom, we get to the last part, which is our case. I didn't want to skimp here, right? I have no issue with this case. Actually, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this case. Great case, sexy looking case. The one thing that um, I wanted to make sure that I chose is like I put a USB-C connector on here. I thought that was pretty important. The thing is, is that there is no USB C header on the X570P. It's not actually being used. So kind of a lot of my logic in terms of choosing this one was more about aesthetics. This may be so many people's first build. This is a great PC chassis to build in. I think when you start going to a lot of the more inexpensive cases, you end up finding that people have a lot of problems building in those cases. And though they save that 10, 15, 20 bucks, they end up being struggling and uh, getting super frustrated and it may never come back. This is just an easy case to build in. And NZXT did such a good job being able to make sure when you're done, you're actually actually have a PC that looks really good. There is no RGB in this build, obviously given $1,000 and want to spend everything on not having RGB. Adding RGB in NZXT, specifically with their AER fans and their um, NZXT, like their Hue controllers and stuff like that, is actually really easy. If you wanted to add some bling later on, doing it in the NZXT ecosystem with their cam software and everything else is really easy. And actually, we're going to be doing a video on that. This isn't on the list. I'm going to add it to the list, but this isn't on the list. I just have an issue with stock um, cables that come with uh, PSU. So. I'm a huge fan of Asia Horse. They make some really, really great um, cable extensions. Um, we'll talk about when we build this, like what to do if you don't have the cable extensions. They make such a big difference. You'll see that when you get done here. We were gonna do some B-roll. We wanna make sure this PC still looks sexy at the end of this video. That's everything that we need to build. Let's just quickly talk about what we're gonna need for this build. Now, some of this is optional, some of this is not, but this is what I usually do for a build. What you definitely will need is a screwdriver. I call this one Excalibur because I've had this since Windows Media Series 9. It's been around forever, uh, has multiple heads. The one thing I would recommend is a really nice screwdriver with a nice long neck because you're gonna need it. And then magnetic, it's not necessary, but magnetic definitely helps. But if you just have like what, I think it's a, a number two uh, Phillips screwdriver, then you're gonna be in good shape. You can also go to something like this, which I would definitely recommend if you're gonna get serious about this, especially upgrading. This is a kit by iFixit. These are incredible kits. They just make it really easy to basically do the work that you need to do. And they have so many options for heads. So that's why I would definitely recommend an iFixit, especially if you're gonna be serious about that. For cable management, because cable management's a thing. You got a couple options. You got these, these are Velcro uh, cable managers. Uh, they're really easy. A lot of times these are just means you don't have to worry about cutting them uh, versus the secondary option that you have there, which are zip ties, or as The Verge calls them, tweezers. Uh, these zip ties um, are just gonna be really easy for bundling stuff, to uh, bundling cables together. You're gonna see me use these 
The main reason that I have these out here is because when you get finished zip tying these down, these are what you use to basically cut off the excess. These are just standard wire cutters. You can get them from any basically hardware store. I have a couple of them laying around. These things make such a big difference when you're using these two. So if you're gonna use these, you want something like this. And then finally, and maybe not necessary, but uh, thermal paste, this is Noctua N NTH1 thermal paste. Most coolers, and many of the air coolers, and specifically if you're using liquid coolers, have this stuff already. You just need to verify when you get it before you go out and buy your own thermal paste that you do in fact need this because like I said, a lot of this stuff is pre-applied. If you got Corsair, guaranteed it's on there, on their air coolers or their liquid coolers. But again, verify that before you sit down and do your build because one thing you don't wanna do is get all the way down there and be like, oh man, I need thermal paste and you end up having to wait a day because if you're anything like me, you wanna get this started right away. Last thing is you're looking at here, and I'll talk about this, is static. This is a PC building mat. This one we specifically got from Newegg. Uh, having a nice anti-static clear, uh, clear place to build is absolutely critical. I have a special flooring that is on the floor that keeps me from basically uh, getting static. But this is what you need. Nice clean surface, nice open surface. These particular tools here, if you add the cable management, then you're, ending, you're gonna end up with a much cleaner looking build. So again, this is what you need. Now, let's get to building. So let's talk about the next step, which is we're gonna put the motherboard together. So what is everything that you need for the motherboard? Well, you need the actual motherboard. <laughs> surprise, surprise. You actually need the thing that you put it all in. You need the CPU. And then finally, you need the M.2 drive, which we have right here. And you need the cooler, which is right here. There's your cooler. And then you also need the RAM, because we're gonna keep in the German, the German accent, the RAM. We need the RAM as well. Let us get started. Okay. So when taking this out of the case, not a whole lot you gotta worry about here. There's an anti-static bag. Inside of the case is other things that you will need. So the other things that you will need out of here, I'm gonna give you kind of an update of some stuff that comes inside of this. The first thing that you will need is your board. This has stuff like where your front panel connectors get plugged in. This also shows things like where you're gonna put your RAM slots because they because we only have two DIMMs, we have to know where to put those. So make sure that you keep this. You will need this on hand for when you're building. These little things right here that you're looking at, these are M.2 screws. When we install M.2, you're going to need these. So please make sure you do not throw these away. You will not get these any other place. And these are little easy things to freaking lose. This right here, is your IO shield. Some awesome, very, very happy um, motherboards actually include these already kind of built in. This one does not. This is a uh, budget X570 board. So this is a AM4, or specifically, this is where we're gonna install our CPU. This is for Ryzen specifically, because this is called an AM4 socket. These two brackets here, um, are going to change, right? They may change depending on which cooler, but in many cases, we'll end up taking these off. But in some cases, like for instance, in Corsair coolers, um, these would actually stay on um, and the Corsair uh, AIO pump would actually connect directly to this. This is actually, we're gonna in install our REN. Thing that's interesting about this is that we actually have four places that we can plug in. Again, you'll notice that these are actually color-coded gray, black. These are actually different colors. That's so you can actually know where they're paired because this is dual channel, specifically in this motherboard that they're gonna go either uh, in the gray slot or the black slot. These only have one toggle in them. Uh, some motherboards actually have two, but this one specifically has one. So when we install these, we basically just use the one side. This is our four by PCIe 16 for plugging in our graphics cards or other expansion cards. Um, for this specific motherboard, you can see that this is actually a different color. This is where you're gonna plug in your graphics card and make sure that you're getting the full power of your graphics card in this case. These right here are your M.2. You can see that we've actually got two of them. Um, you can install up to two uh, NVMe M.2s on this motherboard. Some have more than that, but this particular board has two. Down here, you'll actually see the different screw holes where we'll plug in those little tiny screws we showed you earlier. And then again, you've got another PCIe 16 and then some other expansion slots here. This is uh, your X570 chipset. Uh, this is specifically cooling your X570 chipset, something that just a little bit of information for you. Uh, in this particular case, this is something that can run warm. So these are actively cooled. So that is your motherboard in a nutshell. Um, we'll talk about some of these other parts later on. But for the most part, I want to kind of give you a rundown as we start walking through this so you're familiar with what we're going to do. So this is our AMD Ryzen processor. Um, Couple things about when you open this up. First thing, you definitely don't wanna to touch the top, try and touch the sides. 
this is the uh, this is the IHS or the heat spreader for your CPU. And then on the back, you can see all these golden pens. Don't touch the golden pens, even though they're shiny. You don't want to touch them. That would be bad. Now, when you're looking at the CPU, you see this little gold arrow right here. That you want to line up with the other arrow that is on the motherboard, which is right here. So that little gold arrow goes to the same place as this little arrow right here. Now, when you're going to install the CPU, you see this little arm right here, you're just going to kind of push it off to the side and then lift up. That's going to release the pins right here. And remember, we talked about that little arrow. Well, again, that little arrow in the corner, you're going to basically align with the little arrow here and then it slips right in and you can just kind of jiggle it. You can see that it's in there nice and good. And finally, you're just going to push this down like so, a little bit of pressure and then slip it under like that. So let's talk about the RAM here real quick. So this is the, this is basically the RAM. Uh, when you install the RAM in, you can see in the PCB, this little notch, you want to align this little notch with the little notch that you see right here. For this one, because we're installing two bits, we're gonna install in B2 and A2, which are these two right here. So we're gonna open up these two just like so. So we're gonna put the first one in. All you're gonna do is push down, apply pressure on both sides, get a nice clean snap in. Make sure that you see that snap like so. There's one, the second one, same way. Put it in, push it down, make sure it goes all the way in. Clips it. There you go. RAM is installed. One other thing, guys, is there's always little bits of plastic on these things. So make sure that you look around. On this particular board, it's only in this one place. Make sure you get that nice peel. Get that cleaned off like so. So let's install our M.2 drive. First thing you're going to do is you see down here, it says 2280. I know you probably can't read this, but it says 2280, 2260, and 2242. We're using what's called an 80 millimeter M.2. See this little screw right here? I'm gonna screw that in where it says 2280, like so. You don't wanna do it too tight, but you wanna make sure it's nice and snug. Next thing we're gonna do is you're, with your M.2 is you're gonna slide this in, make sure it clicks in nicely. And then you know that it's kind of installed because it gets like, it's like a little diving board. Finally, take your little screw, do a little thing like so, hold it down like that. A little screw in, screw it down. And this one you just want to screw until it stops. Just like that. M.2 is installed. This is probably the most complicated part of the build in terms of uh, up until this point is putting together the air cooler for the CPU. What you see here is not everything that is included in the box. So this is just what's in the box that you need specifically for installing this on an AM4 or Ryzen bracket. This is your cooler, your CPU cooler right here. So this is what you're gonna basically be installing in. This is your back plate. We're gonna be putting this together here in a couple minutes. All of these components are all the things that are going to get used on this. It includes thermal paste, so please don't go buy thermal paste. This actually has thermal paste, so don't worry about that. And then finally, so you can screw things into um, your motherboard. So let's put the uh, back plate together first. For the back plate, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these parts, these parts specifically. So these are all the parts that you need. These are, these right here are your little clips for putting things in. And then these are your little posts that you're gonna screw stuff in for your motherboard. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bracket like so. You're gonna take these little metal posts you're going to basically slip them in to these little slots on the outside, like this. I'm just gonna clip in like that, and then you rotate them, and then they'll fit right in like that. You're gonna take one of these little brackets like this. You're just gonna kind of push this kind of hard. You're just gonna kind of slip right over it, clips over just like that. And then you're just gonna do that for the last two. So we've just shown you up close what that looks like. So we're gonna put the last two in. Push those together. Don't worry about it, just know that it goes over. You're watching me do it here too. So it's a little bit iffy, but they clip right over it like that. And then you're in the end, this is what your back plate looks like. You see those metal posts are poking through on all four slides. Let's prep building this next. What you're gonna do is we're going to remove these brackets. We do not need them for this build, for this particular thing. So we're gonna take these off. Same thing with the one down here. And 
There we go. And the last thing is, is that we're going to lift this up. Now you'll see, look at that, a little back plate. We're just going to get rid of that. What we're going to do is we're going to take our new back plate and you're going to basically stick these in like that and lay this back down like so. Now we're going to take this little contraption here and then slide this, roll these on all four of these. And don't tighten them all the way. Now I'll just kind of screw them down. There's one. Let me speed this up just to show this. There's four. And then this little device right here, just stick it on top of it like that. Just give it like one or two turns, nothing, nothing too crazy, just until it kind of stops. I don't want to over tighten, but just like that. You'll so now the motherboard is prepped. The last thing we want to do is we want to install our bracket onto our cooler. So what you're going to do is you're basically going to take this, slide underneath like that, and line up right with the hole. It's like little notches on it, which hold it. Then with these weird angles, this is where a magnetic screwdriver helps hold this down. Screw that all the way in. Then you just repeat, tighten it. So well, it's good. Just grab that. Yield it up. Oh snap. So next step, we're gonna take the work because, whoops, wow, that just pops right off. So yeah, we're gonna take the clips off of this. We're gonna remove this fan, okay? So that is now prepared. We're gonna stick that off to the side. Next thing we're gonna do is install our thermal paste. We're gonna do what's called the rice method. So we're gonna, this is our thermal paste right here. This came with the cooler. What you wanna do is you wanna do about the size of a grain of rice. Maybe a little bit bigger because the IHS on this is a little, about that. It's a fat, big piece of rice, but that's totally fine. So in the magic of YouTube, you're probably noticing that uh, these brackets are different. Just FYI, uh, I put the wrong brackets on here. So when you go back and install them, they install the exact same way, but choose the other brackets in the box, just as an FYI. Okay, so what you're gonna do, make sure the cooler master is lined up at the top. You're gonna line this up just like that. Push it down, like so. Clip, make sure it kind of clips in there like that. And from there, you're gonna use your screwdriver and you're gonna do it a star pattern. Just start putting it in. There's one. And then just go to each side. And this is where another, like the one thing that's tough about some of these screws is, there you go. Just keep going around in like a star pattern versus a, go. And this is basically putting pressure and spreading out that stuff that you had before. You don't want to go too, you don't have to worry about going too tight. You'll kind of know when to stop. Like it'll feel, you'll feel it in terms of the tension and stuff like that. Basically just keep going around. There you go. That one. So what we have here is we have two connectors. You have one uh, basically fan header connector you have here. This is your CPU and this is your AO. You wanna make sure you plug this into your CPU connector. Now the other thing too is you'll probably notice that I still have this zip tie. That's again, it's just already set up cable management. It makes it easy. Then we're gonna clip it on like this. And the way this clips work, put these in these little holes. These are the screw holes. There's a little hole back here. You're gonna pull, push it in that little ridge right there. And there we go. Our motherboard is completely built. And for this, like what I have a tendency to do is, is go ahead now that you have it all done. So untwisty tie this like so, and then take off this white sticker because that's annoying. Because again, we want to make sure this is a clean looking build. So lift off the white sticker, bye bye white sticker. We don't need to know what part you are. Just bunch it up really tight like so. And then you can use that same twisty tie. But in my case, I'm going to use a zip tie zip tie this bad boy so it's all cable managed. Looks nice and clean when we get it in later. And again, we grab our handy dander clippers, twist it around. It looks like it was meant to be that way. Now, we are, motherboard is ready. We're gonna put this inside of this awesome PC. 
So first thing we got to do is we got to prep the case. And there's only a couple things we got to do for that. There are these thumb screws that we have to get out. So we're going to take off these thumb screws. I can never get them undone with my thumb. So usually I just take the good old screwdriver and get that done. Be careful here. This can kind of fly off. There we go. So pop that off like so. Flip this around. Let's take the back panel off first as well. So we're going to undo that one. Again, I can never seem to get them. Oh, that one I actually was able to just get off of my hands. Same thing down here. And then this one just kind of pops off nicely as well. Just like that. And then now that we're in, you can see down here, this nice little box. These are all your accessories that you need for putting your PC together. Time to actually get the PC into it. And guys, if you hear, if you hear fireworks, we're shooting this the day of the Super Bowl. So uh, what you are hearing right now is um, the Kansas City Chiefs apparently just won. Spoiler alert if you're catching this way later, because <laughs> this is not gonna be out the next day. So anyway, guys, uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our IO shield. This is the part, let me just tell you, please do not forget this part. If you're following along uh, with this build, uh, you, you go ahead and can do so. But this is uh, your IO shield. This thing is pretty flimsy, but we're gonna put this in. There's a little slot in the back here where we're gonna install this. When you push this, you're gonna look for a big snap. Oh yeah, that, there we go. Congratulations to Kansas City for doing that. So we're gonna push this in here in the back like so, and you're gonna hear kind of a snap. And it's you're gonna kind of work around, but you're gonna make sure it snaps in nice and solidly. Now, the one thing I will tell you, there's holes, little circles at the very bottom. Those are your audio jacks. These always go towards the bottom. We're gonna put in the motherboard now. The standoffs in this case are already set up for you to basically, they're already installed. One thing to always do is check is to go around, just make sure that they're all nice and tight. There is one standoff in the middle. This one actually has like a little peg on it. That one is going to go in the middle slot. So when you push this in, and we're gonna show you in there, we're gonna basically, you do not wanna grab it by the cooler. You wanna grab this like so, just kind of line it up, and just kind of push it over. And those little circles, we're gonna line up and then that little slot is gonna click in just like that. Now make sure you don't lift up the motherboard because it's not installed yet, but it's basically all lined up. It should just basically line up like this. And you can see these little slots are all in the right spot. We're ready to put this in here. We're gonna give you a view of doing install. You're gonna to wanna to use the 632 screw flat are the screws that you're gonna to wanna to use for your motherboard and you're gonna use eight of these. And then they go in three locations. You can just follow along in the top. They're gonna to go in the middle across the top and there's gonna be an eight total. So we're gonna screw those in. Okay, so again, for those of you who don't know, just to remind you, one there, one there, one there, one there. That one is a peg. One there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, next step. Let's connect front panel connectors. So let's talk about what your front panels are. Okay, so the front panel connectors, uh, just to be clear, this is your HD audio connector. It says HD audio on it. We'll show you how to cook up. This is USB 3.1. This is USB-C. We won't be using this because we don't have a USB-C header on our motherboard. And then this is a front panel connector that connects into something that comes in your case. It looks like this. This plugs into this like so. So there's a little there's a little hole that you'll you'll just be able to line these up like this. They plug in like this. And then these are what actually hooks into your case. And you're gonna wanna look at you, we'll show you how to do that here in a minute. So first thing we're gonna do is this is a USB 3.1 connector. There's a little notch here that lines up with a notch right there. One thing is this is one where you can definitely bend pins. You wanna come straight down, line it up, and then push it in, and it'll snap right in. But if you start to feel like there's not a lot of pressure, then just make sure that you didn't bend any pins. Push it down. Next one up is the power switches. You can see here, this is power plus minus. You got your power switch in your hard drive. So this is your front panel. You can see that it's actually labeled on this. We're gonna do the power plus and minus in the top left. The hard drive light goes right below it and then the power switch goes right next to it. And let's show you how to hook those up now. Okay, so my recommendation is start with the hard drive light since it's the only one on the bottom. That goes in the bottom left two slots, like so. Pushes in. Then you got your power plus and minus that go right above it. So minus is on the left and then, sorry, on the right and then plus is on the left, like this. This will take a little bit of practice here. And then finally power switch goes right next to it. 
just like that. There you go, all your front panels are connected. For the HD audio, you can actually see there's a missing pin right here. So what you wanna do is when you line this up, and it actually says HD audio, this goes facing towards the CPU cooler. I'm gonna take this and you just wanna plug it in just like that. And there you go. And boom, all of our front panel connectors are connected. Now we're installing our PSU. Now, there are more parts than this inside of the PSU box, but I wanna walk through the stuff that you need specifically for this build. You need your 750 watt power supply, which you have right here. It's a little sticker. Let's go ahead and peel that bad boy off. Oh, is that as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. Let's talk about the connectors you need. These are your EPS CPU connectors. You'll need both of these. You'll know they're CPU because they say CPU. And on the head, they actually look like they can actually split into, uh, into two, and we'll show you that a little later on. So you'll need both of these. You don't need this for the build. We're gonna plug one set in. These are actually SATA power. These do things like power RGB, power uh, AIOs and other things. It's just easier to do this early. So I'm gonna plug one of these in already. This is your 24 pin motherboard connector. You need this. This is what you need for your graphics card. As you can see, there's actually two. Uh, they can do six pin or eight pin connectors. And then of course, then your power cable. You have screws for your power supply. So first thing we're gonna do is our 24 pin, and remember guys, these are all labeled, so pretty easy, but I'll help explain where these are. First thing you're gonna do, 24 pin, plug that in right there. Next one goes right there. Let's go ahead and connect our CPU connectors. You can see that it says four CPU or PCI six by two. Those are the ones we care about. The ones that don't say CPU is where you don't plug into the CPU. This goes into the PSU. So we're gonna plug one there. And take the second one and plug it right next to it, like so. This is for our graphics card. The part that splits is the part that plugs in. So anything that's labeled says PCIe4, like in this case, or right here. Those are the ones that you are not gonna plug into the power supply. So the unlabeled one goes into there, like that. And finally, we've got our single SATA or peripheral one. We're just gonna plug that one in right here at the top. And let me just tell you this, you wanna do all of this before you plug in your PSU into our case. So now what we're gonna do, as you see this, like basically, how do you plug your, CP, your PSU in? You want your fan to go out of the bottom. As you can see, actually down here, we actually have a dust filter. So that is where the air is gonna come out. I mean, that's where the air is gonna come out. If you did not have that, then you wouldn't worry about that. But in this case, because we're doing just this specific build, you want your PSU to go in down there and you just slide it in like so. Yes, the text is upside down on this side, but on the other side, it's actually right side up. Just plug it in like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this, and then you're gonna line up the screws. And they say on here, for PSU. Grab that. And line up the holes. There's one right there. Those are nice and kind of snug. And your PSU is in. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our GPU. Now, for your GPU, you'll see this, we're gonna put it in this top slot here. And if you follow that top slot, you can see it hits the second and the third one of these extenders. So we're gonna take the, the sorry, the little PCIe covers. So we're gonna take this off. Ugh. Those are, those are something fierce in terms of getting those, those screws are on there. There's one. So you're gonna take the little cover off so we can get access to the secondary screws. Oh, that's still like, oh, I guess you can just loosen it. We're gonna just take ours off just to be better. Okay, we're gonna take off the second and the third. So we'll take this out like so. There you got your second and your third out. Out, you're gonna take your graphics card like this. Just gonna kind of slip it on through there. And then there's gonna line it up with the slot and then you're just gonna push it in and you'll hear it click when it goes in. Like that. Screw those screws back in. And this is a two slot card. So if you are putting in a different graphics card while I'm screwing these things in, you can, if it's like a three slot, you may take out more, but the best thing to do is just kind of follow the line over from the slot you're gonna put it in, which in that case, and it'll show you which one of these little PCI covers you wanna take off. But if there's a, if it's a larger card, like a three slot card, then you'd take off additional ones. Okay, let's put this back on because this is good to go. And there we go. Okay, we're gonna hook up our cable extenders. Now, 
when you looked at your cable extensions, right, you ended up having a ton of different cables. There's actually only three that you need for this build. So you'll need your 24 pin. And again, what happens is that big 24 pin cable that comes out of your PSU plugs into the bottom. You can see the little notch there. So it's gonna plug into this. You need a CPU EPS connector. Here's one right here. And the last one you need is for your uh, graphics card. And so um, you'll see on the top of that, these are actually cable combs. combs. The way you know which direction to have the top be is I just, where they're gonna slot in like this. And then I make sure that the cable comb is actually at the top part of that. Same thing for our PSU one. What I did is I came in and pretended like I was gonna hook it up, like I was going to. And then when I hooked it up, I made sure that the cable combs were on the right side. But in that case, I was wrong, and so now I have to redo them. <laughs> That's why you check. So the first one we're gonna put in, this is for our, our graphics card. I'm gonna plug that one in. We're gonna run this one down here like so, so it's nice and straight. There you go. You see how pretty that looks when you have cable combs? So it looks good. Take our motherboard. You see it's over here. You wanna basically line up the cable like so. Push it in. Make sure it snaps. And there's a little pin. There's only one way that this can go in here. So you'll see a little notch on it. And you're just gonna run this back like this. And then with the cable comb, I'll make sure it looks good. So there you go. Nice clean look there. So there's actually gonna be two of these, but we only have one extender. So we're gonna take this one. So what we're gonna do, we just mine, mine the light. So we're actually gonna split this in half, like so. So we only get, we get this in, cut in half because this is actually easier this way. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this one right up in this upper left-hand corner. And I know you can't see this all that well, but that is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to go like that. And there you go. You can see it plugged in there. We've got everything hooked up. We've got the, as you can see, the cable management. Let's, let's, uh, we've got the front. The front, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. If you're at this point in the video, you've got mostly a completed PC. This is what the front is going to look like of this PC. But now, it's not the same in the back. In fact, it can be a little overwhelming. And let's go ahead and address that problem. So let's talk about the fine world of cable management. Now, if you did not have cable extensions, let's say for instance you did not get those, those were not part of the build, these things, these would plug in where I plugged in the cable extensions, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna plug this into our 24 pin, and remember there's a little notch here. You wanna show it, that shows you where this little clip goes. There's only one way you can plug these in. So this is not something that is easy to mess up unless you like really try to force it in, you know? So clips in like that, there's that one connected. These are our CPU ones. Again, one of those is going to plug in here. You have like a dangling four, don't worry about this. If you did not have a cable extension, you would put both of these up in that top left-hand corner. We're going to put one connection here, sorry. I'll turn it the right way. Show that you can only poke it up one way. And I'm gonna take the second one, I'm gonna run it and drop it in this hole down here. Because this is your second EPS power, your EPS CPU connector will connect that one last. So I'm gonna throw that down there like so. Okay. The last things are your graphics card. And then there's one of these. You wanna connect the L kind of together. So like if you look at this, there's a little notch, you wanna kind of push that together. And then like that, just kind of slink it all in. And there you go. So there your graphics card is connected. If you were using like a 2060, 2070, or 2080, you might need this secondary connection again. Sometimes it's a three pin, sometimes it's a four pin. That's why you see this right here. This is so you can connect it in. That's what this is for. So once you kind of have that, you can kind of shove that down. The, this one right here, which remember is a SATA, we're not gonna use any of these. These are in case you do expanded stuff later. So if you look at the case down here from the bottom, and I know we got it kind of seen here, you see that really what I have is I have a ton of room. So all of those extra cables, I'm just gonna kind of shove down in this bucket down here, this little hole down here, and this is gonna kind of store all of my cables. For these that are here, I'm gonna kind of push them off to the side, 
And the really kind of the thing when you think about cable management is you want to kind of channel things together. So this one, we're not going to quite do that yet. We'll do that here in a second, but we're going to kind of have this ready. Now, lastly, it looks like we actually have a couple of fan headers that we need to hook up. So we're going to get these run. This is the last thing we have to run for the PC. And these are just to run the two internal fans that we have on uh, for the PC. So we're going to look for some places to run those here in a second, and then we'll show that in just a few minutes. If you look down here, you'll see there's a gap. You're going to take these two and you're just going to run them right here and we'll hook those up in just a few minutes. And then lastly, I'm going to shove all this extra cabling down here like so. And then you can use this nice little channel thing right here, kind of zip up this last little part, these last little cables. And there you go, you got kind of a managed cable right there. And then you're kind of good to go. And then we'll, for these ones, because we didn't use them, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do the last part of this here in a minute, but that's just kind of the way you leave it. And we're gonna turn it over one more time. Turn over this case one more time and finish it up. For these last two fan things, these last fans that we were showing in there, you want to take these two things and you want to see this hole right above the power supply. You just want to shove them right in there because your two fan headers for this motherboard are right there. So we're going to shove them in there. And now we're going to basically just turn this case over and finish hooking things up. Okay, so you're going to grab this little CPU thing right here that we ran through here. And this is going to be a little bit awkward, but you want to flip it and just basically plug it into that hole in the top left. And there, these clips go on um, pointing up. So when it's done, it will look like that. And there's your power cable plugged in right there. Okay, so last two cables, basically we're at the very end here. Everything's basically ready to go. We're just kind of making things look pretty. But the last thing we want to do now is we want to take these two cables right here that we ran through, these are your fan headers. Right down here at the bottom, so you got these two fan headers right here. There's two cables. They have little lips in them. And I'll show you the lip here in a sec. So I'll do one, and then I'll show you the lip in the second one. There's two little lips. I'm just going to line it up with the little piece of plastic there, and then push it on down, like so. So now for the last part. So everything's done. A couple things I want to talk about, and then we'll basically get this thing turned on. Now that you know that everything is hooked up, a couple things that I did is um, with this one, you don't want it, you want to make sure that this cable right here, which is your USB 3, is just kind of grouped with your larger um, 24 pin. And this is where you're going to start using zip ties to kind of clump things together. So I'm going to zip tie this one together just to make sure that these two stay together. So when you look at the front, it's nice and clean. Then what I'm going to do is I want to use the tie downs to tie down the, the other kind of cables. There we go. Then this, you want to make sure for this one that this stays laying flat. So don't pull it too tight because the big thing is you want to make sure you have a nice kind of puff on the other side. And I'll show you that here in a minute. For this, there's not a whole lot I use this for. But the one thing you do want to make sure is this is actually the extension for the power for the graphics card. You want this to be on the outside because you want to be able to kind of push it and pull it to make the graphics card look nice, the, the front cable and the graphics card to look nice. So you don't want to put that, push it behind all the other cables because it needs room to kind of, for you to be able to train the cable, so to speak. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to zip tie these together, clump together. So what I do is I kind of push them over in the edge. Let me see, grab a zip tie. And then there are tie downs here. There are tie downs down in this one. Some of them actually might be used. So what I have a tendency to do is, again, using those tie downs because those tie downs are gonna allow you to make sure that everything looks super clean. So there we got a tie down there. Get that going. I'll make sure those are nice and tight. Again, make sure this is flat. There's another tie down right here. Kind of clump everything together here. Grab another zip tie as best you can. I don't, again, you gotta be careful. Like right now what you're seeing here is I'm starting to get this trapped on this. So I 
gonna see what you'll do is you'll see me do things like I'm loosen things so I know that I'll have be able to make the front look good so I've loosened that and I'm gonna kind of tie this together now and there you can see kind of everything's channeled together and that is it the PC's kind of cable managed at this point in time once you kind of have everything done like that kind of push it all together again probably put one more here kind of nice keep it nice and clean and again you can do this with either velcro or with the uh, zip ties if you did it right you should be able to just it should look very similar there we go and, you, and as you can see now when you look at the back of the case it all looks nice and clean and put together as you take your little cutters you just snip off those little end parts and what I like to do is once I kind of have all of these clipped like this, just to kind of continue to kind of have that uniformity as I have a tendency to turn these around so you don't see the little fatty ends. Okay. So you've got them all cable managed. This PC is basically ready to turn on. Turn this over one more time. And this is like the last part is to see how like I kind of have like messy cables. It's kind of work on training. And the way you kind of train your cables is just by bending them. But you want to get kind of like that nice, nice, Kind of flat look when you and when i say train cable that means that you can you get it to stay the way to stay a certain way like i want this one to stay straight so what you'll see is i'll do stuff like bend it the other direction and hold it and then it'll learn to stay you essentially train it to stay straight we've got a nice clean looking build now all the cables look nicely managed they're all routed correctly and not only is this a very simple build but when we're all said and done we power it on it also looks nice and clean. We've now got the entire PC done. If you followed the instructions, you should be at the same spot. And all we gotta do now, is we gotta take this cable, put it in this plug, see what happens. Okay, it's in, turn it on. Do you see anything? You should, oh, I see lights. That is a good sign. So I had told that there was no RGB. Uh, surprise, I guess there is some RGB in this a little bit. Scotch, one light. So that means that it runs 1% faster than it would have if there were no lights. But here's the real test. Oh, I hear fans. Oh, I see fans. And there we go. We have a working PC. All the fans are spinning. We are good to go. Guys, so I wanted to show you real quick now that you've got your system on, real thing. If you wanna get your full speed, here you have your, your BIOS. And you might be asking, hey, I wanna make sure my RAM is running at 3600 megahertz. Now, the thing is, is that right now, RAM needs to have a profile enabled to run at 3600 megahertz. So if you go down here where it says DOCP, you wanna go ahead and change disabled to profile one, hit okay. Then you wanna hit save and exit. You'll see all these changes happening and then you hit okay. And now your RAM is set for 3600 megahertz. That is it. We've got a completely built system that is ready for you. And for those of you who don't know, again, these were all of the parts that we put in the $1,000 PC build. When you have this, you have a perfect base from which to upgrade your PC at any point in time. You can basically, you have a power supply that will support any new motherboard moving forward. You can easily throw in a graphic card or a new CPU and know that you're good to go, right? Whether that's fourth gen Ryzen, because every time this is future proof and you've got PCIe Gen 4 out of the box. I know that you can spend less, mo or less money or even just a little bit more money and get outdated tech that is more powerful, but really wanted to make sure that you had something that you could easily upgrade. What did you think of this video? What did you think of the parts? Did you get enough details um, when you followed the guide? If we were gonna do a more in-depth guide, what would you like to see? Let us know about all of that stuff in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, you hit that like button and ring that notification bell so you know each and every time we post a new video. Also make sure you check out our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. over at mixer.com slash Roby1Kenobi. Make sure to give me a follow over on Instagram and Twitter at Roby1Kenobi or over on Facebook if your parents hang out there at facebook.com slash robytech. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for following this video. I hope you found this helpful and maybe, maybe please let me know in the comments if you have one of these that you built following this guide. Thank you very much, guys. Now go play some games on this awesome system you just built. Hashtag beefy cores.